So a couple of weeks ago, I've been to the doctor and had my heart checked out. And while I was sitting on the stationary bike with these electrodes on my chest, I saw the machine spinning off my heart rate. I looked at it and I'm like, man, that looks like the data from the Kepler Space Telescope that I was working on at that time. And that's why I got the idea for this talk, because in a sense, Kepler is a giant stellar heart rate monitor that looks for alien worlds, for planets around other stars. So how does Kepler do this? To explain this, I want you all to uh, raise your hand like this. So this is roughly the area of the sky that Kepler was looking at for five years. You can take your hands down. <laughs> so Kepler took a picture of this area of the sky for five years every 30 minutes. And then we can take brightness measurements of every star in this field, about 150,000 stars in this field, and make measurements of its brightness over five years. And for most of the stars, these brightness measurements are just a long, flat line, which doesn't mean the star is dead, it's boring. But for some of these stars, we see little reoccurring dips, dips again and again, really like a heartbeat, again and again, every couple of days, a little dip in the light curve, just like a heartbeat, and that tells us there's a planet. So what happens there? So if this is a star, minding its own business, just glowing, and sometimes, if we are lucky enough, the planet passes between us and the star, and then again, and again, and again, that's where this heartbeat comes from. This is what tells us there's a planet, that heartbeat of dimming of the, of the star. And Kepler was super successful doing this. Kepler found 3,000 planets just in this area of your hand. And once you find these many planets, you can start to extrapolate. You can think about how many planets are there in our galaxy, in the whole universe, what fraction of stars do have planets. And the rough numbers we have right now is that there's a planet for every star. So roughly every star on average has a planet. And between 10 and 20% of stars have what we call habitable planets. So planets that have the right size, the right temperature to eventually hold some sort of life, some sort of biology. So if you count to 5 to 10, there might actually be a planet. If you count 5 to 10 in the stars, there might actually be a planet that hosts life. And with the next generation of telescopes, which I also worked on developing, we actually have the chance to find what we call so-called biomarkers in these planets. So really, really um, signatures, fingerprints of life in the atmospheres of these planets. So the bottom line is we are really the first generation in the uh, history of humankind that will have the technology. And I'm 100% sure that we will have the chance in 10, 15 years to answer this, one of the oldest questions of humankind, is there life out there in space? Thank you.